What is the best way to explain your business model in a pitch deck story? Let's find out. All right, congratulations on reaching this far. You have completed part one, which means you have identified a market need and you have a solution to offer. Now, many people call that desirability. So there are people who desire your solutions and people who are willing to pay for them. Now, the next two questions are feasibility and viability. Now, feasibility refers to ease of use. Is it possible to do easily or conveniently? And a viability Viability refers to finance. Does it make financial sense to you, to your teams, to the people who are funding your projects or people who will be doing a business from you and buying from you? So once again, your audience is trying to make a quick decision. The question here they're trying to answer is, does this solution make financial sense? And the quick answer they need is yes, no, or maybe. So your slide needs to answer that question quickly. Now, financial sense can mean different things to different people. Now, if you're talking to investors, they need information and data to prove that your solutions can be profitable and scalable. They need information to justify their investment. Now, your market wants to know how they can do business with you. What type of business transaction are you proposing for your buyers or for potential affiliates and partners? And you and your team needs to know your business model so you can set budgets and tracking systems. So your goal for this section really is to, to demonstrate that your ideas and solutions are feasible and viable. So you're going to attempt to answer one or more of these questions, how your business or solutions make money or how buyers can do business with you or what details do you and your team need to measure and justify costs. So you don't have to include everything. Now it all depends on your audience and you get to decide what elements you add to your uh, slide. Now, more specifically, I'm going to show you how to communicate your business model to different audiences. Uh, I'll show you a business model framework and how to use it, uh, factors that can impact what you end up putting on your business slide model, and business slide model examples for companies, products, and services, so you can see what other people are doing and how you can model them. Now, even if you don't plan to use your pitch deck just yet, uh, you need that information for yourself because as a business or project leader, you are heavily invested. So you need to know if this project or business model is a good investment opportunity. And any time it stops being a good investment, either in terms of time or in terms of money, you might have to make some changes or you might just have to let this project and business go. Now, many people try to skip this part because there are many questions. As you'll see in the following videos, this section is going to be probably longer than the rest of the segments and there are quite a lot of exercises because this is important part of your business journey and the project it's all about the money and the delivery because if that part doesn't work really then you don't have any business so a lot of people try to skip it but I highly recommend you take the time even if you don't have all the answers just yet answer what you know for now and you can mark about any other items that need further research because the number two uh, reason why many businesses fail that, that can include projects is because of bad planning. And in many cases, people don't even have a plan at all. So it's very important to have a plan. Now, at the same time, there are some people who over plan and they have a plan and they're inflexible. They just don't want to make any changes. They don't want to listen to the market. They don't want to listen to anyone, any comments and suggestions. They're being inflexible. And that is the fifth common, most common reason why businesses fail. So we need to find that balance where you're actually planning, you're listening to the market and you're being flexible and making some adjustments. And that's why the best strategy is to have an evolving business model, which means you listen to your market and you make adjustments. Now, successful businesses evaluate their business model on a regular basis. So this is an exercise that you might have to do at least once a year to make sure that your business is still healthy. And the goal really is to answer the following questions. How do you create, deliver and capture value? Now, many of these principles can apply to projects as well. So really knowing the foundation of the business model can help you in many aspects of your business or project leadership. Now, the first part of an evolving business model is to create. Now, create refers to your solutions like your products and services. So the question here is what products and services do you create and how much time and effort and money does it take to, does it cost you to create them? 
Now, the next step is delivery. How do you deliver your solutions to people who need them? And how much time, effort and money will it cost you to deliver your solutions? Which leads us to the last part about getting paid. So how do you get paid for your effort and is it really worth it? So the question here is how much do you charge and can you still make a profit after you've spent all that time, money and effort creating and delivering your solutions? Because the big question here is, can you capture enough money to repeat this process again? Because to stay in business, you need to repeat and refine that process. Or you need, you might have to create or you might have to update your products and services and delivery system and fine tune it until you find that balance where you're getting enough money coming into your business to justify the cost of operating that business. So your business model is really all about implementation and how you plan to get paid. And and that's why many people also call it the revenue model. So if you hear anyone saying, what's your revenue model? Really, they're talking about your business model as well. Now, from an investment perspective, you need to show if your business is scalable. First, you need to know uh, when you can break even, which means at what point can your income cover your expenses? And next is profit. At what point can you make a profit? Now, profit is the amount of income that remains after you've paid all your expenses, your debts and operating costs. Now, many business owners forget to include their salary. So if you're taking a salary, you need to include that in the cost. That's not a profit. Your salary is not a profit. Profit. So after you've paid yourself, you've paid all the expenses, debts and operating costs, how much money is left behind? Now, this will help you determine if your project or business is scalable. Scalable means that you can repeat the same process at a larger scale in multiple locations so you can serve more people and make more money. Now, you need this information to determine if your business is investable. Can you make enough profits to support outside investors or are you building a lifestyle business that can support you? Now, it's called a lifestyle business because it fits your lifestyle. It can support you and your family and it gives you pride of ownership and flexibility of time. But if it does not make enough money to support outside investors, then really you don't have a business that is scalable or investable. You have a lifestyle business, which is good for you. And investors are not interested in that kind of business. They're looking for a business that's scalable and investable. So in the upcoming videos, I'm going to show you some factors that can impact what you would include on your business model. So when you're creating the pitch deck slide and it's called the business model, you don't want to put too much information, but there are some factors that will impact what you decide to put on that slide. And some of these uh, uh, factors include the revenue source, product category, type of income, transaction type, lifetime value, customer acquisition cost. There's a quite a few elements. So I'm going to show you all of these in the upcoming videos so that you can decide what is more relevant event for you and your circumstance. But at the high level, there are three things that your business model needs to explain. Can you remember what they are? Da, 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 da. Okay, let me show you what they are once again. Well, the first one is how much does it cost you to create your solutions? So it's about create. Uh, second is how much does it cost to deliver your solutions? It's about delivery. And the third part is how do you get paid for your effort? Capture. So your action item for this section really is to watch the rest of the videos uh, where we're going to dive a little bit more about your business model. So go ahead and I'll see you in the next video.